ChatGPT just launched its brand new deep research feature and this feature is absolutely mind blowing. In fact, I think it's the best feature ChatGPT has ever launched because it allows you to basically do hours and hours and hours of research in just a few minutes. By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to access it and five different use cases that you could start to use today to make way better decisions. So in order to actually use this tool, it's incredibly simple. You literally just come over to ChatGPT01, you toggle on deep research right here and boom, it is now going to go ahead and do deep research. But you need to make sure that you're prompting this correctly because there are new ways to prompt this and if you mess these up, you're not gonna get the results that you want. Now your ideal prompt for this should look something like this. So this is going to be use case number one, which is basically using ChatGPT in order to figure out different trends that are coming to whatever area you work in or maybe an area you're interested in or an area where you have hobbies there. So here's what a prompt with deep research should actually look like. So this one right here is going to be acting as a consultant for real estate buying. So what I'm gonna say here is I want you to act as a strategic consultant for real estate buying. I want to know what your outlook is on real estate in the US over the next one to five to 10 years. Please provide, and this is the part that's really important for deep research. I have an overview of emerging trends, multiple future scenarios, early signals to monitor, strategic recommendations to position myself effectively, and any recommendations to help mitigate risk. Essentially, you wanna list out the different things that you want this to actually look at and hone in when it's doing research. And all you do is click right here. Now watch what happens next. This is going to go through and clarify exactly what it should be looking into. So this says, before I dive in, could you clarify what are we looking for nationwide? Are we looking at this? Are we looking at this? Are we looking at this? And this is what makes this incredibly powerful because it doesn't literally just take the prompt that you gave it. It also has you clarify several different things. And what this is going to do is help it tailor its analysis to our direct goals. And if you've watched my videos before, I've tried to get you to do this with ChatGPT, where I tell you, you shouldn't just be prompting ChatGPT, you should also be getting ChatGPT to ask you questions so it provides you with better answers. The first thing here is, are you looking for a nationwide outlook or do you have specific regions or cities in mind? I'm gonna say, I am looking at the South. It's gonna say you focus on residential. I am focused on residential. Are you considering real estate for personal use? I am considering real estate for personal use. Do I have any risk tolerance? I prefer to be very aggressive. And then finally, do I want specific insights on things like interest rates, inflation, supply, demand? And I'm gonna say yes, please give me insights on all economic factors. Now what I do here is give this this information, basically answering its questions. And if it has any other questions, it's gonna go ahead and answer them or it's going to clarify exactly what it's going to do right here. So it's basically spitting the prompt back at me. It says, great, I'll analyze the outlook for residential real estate in the Southern US over the next one to five to 10 years, considering an aggressive investment strategy. The research is going to include this, 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 basically six different things. And it says, I'll compile a comprehensive analysis and I'm going to share my findings with you soon. And now boom, this is gonna go through and actually do this for us. And as you can see, what it now does is it brings up this box right here that says that it is beginning its research and it's going to go ahead and do that. Now, what you can also do is if we click into starting research here, this is going to show us all the different activity in here and all the different sources that it's gone through and it's actually gone through. So as you can see right here, it's going through and compiling all the resources. Now, as you can see here under activity, this says that your deep research request is currently queued up. But if I come into another one that I also have running at the same exact time, here's what you're going to see. This is literally going to through and it updates me every single time that it does something. For example, it's pulling together a thorough report, it is researching from stuff, it's piecing together whether the site needs to scroll or load correctly, it's searching for more stuff, it's actually going through and reading something here, it's searching for more stuff, and this is absolutely crazy because it is literally telling you exactly what it's reading, what it's doing, and this is nuts. Now another thing I did want to call out because this is almost done here is that I currently have this research project running, this one running, I have this one running, I have this one getting ready to start running after I answer these questions, and this one is also getting ready. So I literally have five of these running at one time and it's not breaking ChatGPT. This is nuts because there is no other way I would have been able to research all five of these things 
at once. Okay, so now that this is done, here's what this actually looks like. I want you to look at this. This is literally an entire research project right here on what ChatGPT thinks is going to happen to the real estate market in the South in the United States. This is nuts. Do you have any idea how long it would have taken me to come up with this or any idea how expensive this would have been to you to get somebody to do this? Let's say a consulting firm or even somebody that's an expert at this. I mean, we can literally keep scrolling here. This is absolutely insane. I cannot believe this. Look at this. I am still scrolling. I am still scrolling. I am still scrolling. <laughs> I am still scrolling. This is nuts. Now, there is one part of this that is a little bit annoying. I don't want to go through all of this. And look at this. It even cites all of its sources right here. So what I'm going to ask this to do is please summarize this for me. I'm going to say, please summarize the most important points this for me in less than 500 words. So this is now going to go through. This is going to summarize this. But if I wanted to relate back to this, I could literally relate back to all these different things. I mean, this is nuts. I would have never gone through and done this much research before. And you can follow up and ask it to hone in on specific things. So Right here, here's what we're going to see. This is crafting a summary right here. So population and job growth. Southern states continue to outpace other regions. That's really good. There are tight supply and construction constraints, which means that there's going to be low inventory, interest rates and inflation. It goes through how that might affect this. It has a best case scenario here. It has a base case and it has a worst case right here. Looks for early signals to actually watch for, which are things that I could be looking at, strategic recommendations and risk mitigation. So this is absolutely insane. This is amazing research that I, can, that I can now act on or I could use this to do so many other use cases. Now use case number two is gonna be using this for due diligence. Let's say that you were going to buy a car or maybe you wanted to buy a boat or maybe you wanted to buy anything. You could have this go through and actually do due diligence for you to figure out whether or not what you're buying would be a good decision. Now the prompts for these are going to be a little bit different than the prompts that I just showed you. So please make sure you don't skip this part. So for this next use case, I wanna go through actually buying an exotic car but I want it to be something that is going to be reliable and I want this to go through and actually find me the most reliable exotic cars. So as you can see, I didn't provide it with anywhere near as much information as I did with the last prompt, but I did that on purpose because I wanted to see whether or not it would actually come up with good questions to ask me without me having to prompt it for it. It actually came up with really good follow-up questions. What's your budget? You want it to be new or used? Are there preferred brands that you would like to avoid? Are there specific performance specs that you're looking for? Any particular body style? maintenance costs, and are there any features that you need it to have? So if I scroll down here, I gave it my preferences right here. And again, it went through and now it is piecing this together and we are at 19 sources here. And as you can see, this has literally gone through. It has searched through several different websites. It has gone through and actually thought about these things. And this is way better than Google's deep research for a few reasons. One, this doesn't just go through and get the research. This gets the research and then interacts with it and tries to decipher what people are saying, what trends might be, or what might happen in the future, or even what my follow-up question might be, which is amazing because that means that this is actually interacting with what's out there on the internet, and I don't have to go through and actually do anything. And as I could see here, it's looking at McLarens, it's looking at Ferraris, it's looking at Porsches, it's looking at the Acura NSX. This actually understands exotic cars and exactly what I'm looking for, which is nuts. And as you could also see, if you have several of these going on, you will get this notification right here that actually tells you, hey, this research project's done, and then you know which window to go through, or you click on it, and boom, you could actually go to that research project. So this is done here. It has an introduction, exactly what it's looking at. It goes through and actually looks at all these different cars, looks at the Lamborghini, looks at an NSX, looks at a Porsche, looks at an R8, looks at a GTR. And if we scroll all the way down, what this is going to tell us is that that being said, the cars that it would recommend are going to be an Acura NSX and then a Porsche and then a Huracan. And then I would actually say that this is pretty accurate. I would probably put the Porsche above an NSX, but this did a pretty good job. It left out Ferrari, which isn't going to be that super reliable car and actually gave me the best cars that it would recommend. Now what I could do is take this information, open up a new ChatGPT window, get it to search and get it to find me cars that actually fit my budget point.
Now this next use case is something that I wish existed 10 years ago when I was going through school, and that is the ability to have this do academic research for you. It could be academic in the sense of something that you're doing for school, or it can literally go through different academic journals if you're trying to learn about some new area, for example, machine learning or maybe the War of 1812. But before I dive into that, please make sure you smash that subscribe button so that you never miss any of the latest and greatest AI updates because I only upload about stuff that's actually useful and and exactly how to use it. So what I went ahead and asked this to do was said that I need to be a research assistant for an academic project focused on the War of 1812. I gave it exactly what to do here. It asked me some specific questions like, do I have preferred sources or formatting preferences? And I told it to please make sure that it's in a report format with headings, subheadings, and citations. Now, if we scroll all the way down here, we're gonna see that this is almost done. It is going through, it has gone through 19 different sources here, and guess what? It is getting me all the information that I need to know about the War of 1812 for my hypothetical research project that I had to do for school. And if this doesn't have all the information you need, again, all you do is reprompt it. It's going to go through and do more research, bring it back to you, and this is nuts because I remember this taking me weeks to do, if not months to do in school, but now this is literally doing it in just a few minutes. Now, before this wraps up, the other thing that I did want to point out to you is if we look here, we're going to see that this isn't literally just doing one search, like if I prompted it to do one search. You'll see that right here, it is searching for Mahan 1972 War of 1812 Scholarship. Right here, it is searching for primary and secondary sources of World War of of War of 1812. Right here, it's looking for the War of 1812 Grand Strategy. Here, it's looking for another battle or another source of this. Down here, it is looking for <laughs> War of 1812 Lessons Dissertation. So it is literally going through and searching for dozens of different things. And I've been watching this right here, and this is pretty incredible because this has been thinking right here on this one source for like the last minute, which is nuts. Because in order for you to get this to do this, which is prompting ChatGPT to go through these 19 different sources, you would have had to sit here for like a half an hour in order for it to actually think about the, all these things and it would have never been formatted the way that this is about to format this for me. So now this is done, and again, this has gone through and given me an absolutely amazing research report. It cites its sources in here, it has different subtitles, it has different subheadings, it has all of this different stuff in here, and this is absolutely nuts. I could also add in here, hey, I need it to be this many paragraphs or this many pages or whatever the case is, or I could drop this into Canvas right here, and what I can do is actually click on each of these and get it to do specific things here. For example, I could reply directly just to this part right here and say, hey, I don't like this. Can you expand this or something along the lines of that? And boom, this is going to help you write research projects literally a hundred times faster. Now, this next use case is going to be using this for business intelligence. Let's say that you are going to be launching a new product or you want to start a new business. You could have this go through and do all of your competitive research for you. Now, in order to do this, what I want to do is come in here and say, I want you to act as a business intelligence consultant. My startup is planning to launch a YouTube mentorship in the YouTube marketing market. Please research and summarize. And then I give it the five different things that I wanted to research and summarize. It goes through and asks me a bunch of different follow-up questions here per usual and then it actually goes through and starts doing the research. Now this took four minutes to do the research and went through 12 different sources and this went through and gives me a market landscape. It gives me different products and services, different pricing structures, different distribution channels, all of this stuff. And now what I could do is scroll all the way down and see exactly what sources it's going to be citing here and exactly what its conclusion is and exactly what I should do with my go-to-market tactic for a successful launch. This is crazy. Now again, if I like one part of this or don't like one part of this, I can chat back with it and say, hey, can you help me determine what my pricing should be or what should my header be or what should my promise be based on what everybody else is doing. And then my last and favorite use case with this is getting this to do stock 
research or crypto research for you because the results from this are absolutely nuts. Now, the way that you would do this is to do something like this. I have $250,000 in cash. I want to invest it over the next 12 months. Can you give me a report on where I should consider investing and why? And then it goes through and asks me my risk tolerance, my goals, diversification, if I have any geographic preference, if I have liquidity needs or sector preferences, in which case I give it all of the different answers here. Now, this went through for 10 minutes, went through 17 different sources, and it gives me different portfolio allocations that it actually recommends for me here. And I have to be honest with you, this is kind of almost exactly what I do. And I think that this is a really smart decision here. Now, again, it goes through and gives me different stock picks like Apple, Microsoft, it gives me Google, it gives me Amazon, it gives me Meta, it gives me NVIDIA, which of course, if I'm investing in tech, it gives me Tesla, gives me all of these really good ones. And it really goes through that these are the MAG7 and it goes through how well they do versus the S&P 500 when we are in a bull market. It also goes through and gives me different high growth tech ETFs. For example, VGT, which I love. It gives me this other one that I haven't heard of before. It gives me a Fidelity one. It gives me these two down here. And if we keep going, it even recommends ARK. Now, if we keep scrolling down, it gives me a bunch of different market trends that are supporting growth. And it also gives me key risks and considerations. So it actually goes through all of this stuff. And again, I find this incredibly useful because otherwise what I would have had to do is go and do all of this research for myself, but now I can see all of the different things that it recommends. And again, ask it follow-up questions on how it thinks about it or ways that I could mitigate the risk even further or increase my returns even further. Now, if you thought this was nuts, you're going to love the five other new features that ChatGPT just launched. And I made this video right here so that you could stay up to date on them and you shouldn't skip it. So please, I'll see you over there.